We're joined by Dr. Ara Sapaya, who is somebody who was on Golf Central the other night. You work with some top players mm -hmm. on the PJ Tour in treatment. It's great to see you as always. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Let, let's talk about something we've heard a lot in the last several days. That's back spasms. Hmm. It, what exactly is a spasm, and, and how do spasms occur in, in one's back? Well, uh, spasm is the muscles getting tight. Uh, let me show you with my spine. Um, if you imagine this is the front and this is the back, there are big, strong muscles that keep us upright in the back. So if there's anything that causes pain or irritation in the back, it's a protective, natural protective mechanism that fires off and the muscles tighten up so that you don't move an area that's potentially injured and make it worse. So it may be a good thing, really. But it's protecting the human body. Okay, when you say potentially make it worse, when he walks off the golf course, what, what potentially could happen if you are having spasms and you continue uh, to, to maybe inflame that? Or what, what can happen structurally to your back? So if it, the back is very delicate. There are multiple nerves that run in there, tiny little things, there are discs, there are joints. Uh, so when, when you get spasm, Usually it's one of three things. Uh, the disc, there could be a problem with the disc, which is in the front, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm going to demonstrate something in a second. Um, there could be problems with the joints, these little intricate joints in here, uh, especially with tour players. They generate so much club speed. Uh, the, the, the speed at which they go through the ball is enormous. Um, and one of the other things is a lot of amateurs turn this way, a lot of tour players side bend as well. Mm -hmm. So what that does is, if I can show you, this joint here, it kind of opens up and slams it down. Opens up and slams it down. Now, over the course of his career, I mean, that's years and years and years of doing this. So all of those can trigger a spasm, okay? With the discs, the discs themselves, a lot of times you can get something called a disc bulge. Uh, that's very common, and it doesn't cause any pain. Most of us, if I scanned uh, MRIs and all the 12 players, 90% of them have a disc bulge, and they won't have any problems. And the disc bulge... The disc itself is like a jelly donut, Gary. Really? Yeah, it's like this. It's got, it's got a, a, an outer covering, mm -hmm. and it's got a gooey center, okay? And in the course of a normal day, the disc gets compressed. Right. Okay? And, and the bulge is, if you imagine uh, a burger in a, in, a, in a bun, they're just spilling out the side. That's what a bulge is. It doesn't really cause any harm. But as you get older... Uh, if you have other medical conditions, you get dehydrated. The discs now become like donuts. They've been sitting out for two or three days. Okay? So then when you put the, the torque, the shearing forces through them, what would happen is something like this. The disc, instead of being nice and round, mm -hmm. gets kind of squished up and out of shape. And then what happens is you can actually tear it. And when you tear it, this I want to show it to you. Literally like, like the filling of a jelly donut, it's yeah. going to start to seep out. And then when you squeeze it, that comes up. You see? And that then causes irritation of the nerves, mm -hmm. can affect the joints, and that's a big deal. Well, let's get back to, to treatment of spasms. Tiger alluded to uh, a, a lot of extensive treatment over the, the, the two days after withdrawing from the Hanukkah. What, what exactly, what, what types of treatment are we talking about? Well, treatment of spasm, is, you know, I break it down in three phases. The first phase is if you get pain with spasm, if you end up in a vicious cycle, you get pain, you get spasm, spasm causes more pain, which causes more spasm, and you end up in this horrible cycle. First thing you need to do is control the pain. Uh, people at home, you can use anti-inflammatories, uh, ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin, um, and take Tylenol with it. If that doesn't control the pain, we need something stronger, prescription medication and maybe a muscle relaxant together with that. Um, I like to use things like acupuncture and dry needling and cupping very early on to alleviate some of the pain. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I use is heat, you know, even standing in the shower. In the shower, hit the water right there, warm it up, using ointments, using heat packs. You know, even if you don't have any of that, get a towel, damp it, throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds, put it in your back. All of that will control the pain. Once the pain is under control, then we go to movement. Because I like to get movement early. Because when your back is in spasm, you don't want to move. Um, and the, the easiest thing, and I learned this on the road with one of the PTs on tour, Mark Wall, uh, when the players come in after a flight and just could not walk. And literally we had him, once we control the pain, 
on his laying on his back, pull his knees up like this, and just dropping it to the side mm -hmm. as little as possible without without pushing it. Once you get movement and you progressively get more and more movement, then the third phase, which is where you really need to focus on, is to figure out what caused the spasm. Is it something locally in the back? Is one leg slightly, you know, millimeters shorter than the other? In which case, you need to adjust the hip, adjust the spine, uh, uh, and figure out that for a long-term solution. You work with the likes of a Henrik Stenson, Ian Poulter. You mentioned if you did an MRI on virtually everybody, they would have uh, some condition that would make it less than ideal. Any of these players dealt with these types of situations recently that you've had to treat? Uh, be Stenson or Ian or anybody else on the PGA Tour currently? No, none of my, my, my players. Uh, Stricker has a back issue that flared up uh, last year, mm -hmm. uh, which, again, was, was a disc issue. Right. Um, but... In itself, it's very, very common. Well, you know, disc bulge is there all the time. And if you get the MRI, you'll say you have a disc bulge. That may not mean you have symptoms. So they can play along with this. It's only when things get worse and they tear. And that's why, to some extent, when you get pain, you may want to pull out because you could actually tear it like that and make it worse. And then you'll be off for six weeks as opposed to four days. And that was something a lot of people were wondering about. Thank you so much for your insights. Good to see you as always. Yeah, you too, Gary. Uh,